Seven, you were outside while we were being attacked by the flying spiders yeah. as well, yeah. and we all survived. As far as I know, they could be in my clothes. It could uh, be. I'm they, they could. I'm emotionally scarred. I'm scared of mm-hmm. spiders to to a point. If I see them, I'm okay with them. I can leave them be. If they're on me, I have to kill them. If they're all around me, I want to kill me. <laughs> and as we're outside and I'm looking up at the sky, I'm seeing these little floaty webs and these little floating spiders and they're hitting objects and then they're hitting the ground after they lower themselves to the ground. It's like attack of the spider man and I I I I I I'm okay. We've made it. Ooh, we're in the Spider Verse now. We can officially say that we're a part of the Spider Verse. We've entered the Spider Verse. Because we've experienced them. Either that or they're just an alien invasion. Can we agree that from Spider Verse, Madam Web is the most contrived character of all time? Do I know much about Madam Web? Do you? Do Do I? Learn me. Uh, Oh, God. Learn me. Why are you going to put me on the spot? Because. So, the way I know it. And I could be wrong. I've been wrong twice before, I think. Mm-hmm. You will not uh, get a third. I, damn it. Uh, so she is like your Spider-Verse Morpheus. She's aware of all things going on across all Spider-Verses simultaneously. Okay. And she sits upon the throne of webs. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was making this shit up. <laughs> so, yeah, it sounds like you're sitting on a throne of lies right I, now, right. but it's all true. Is that why my seat's so warm? No. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, the th- pants on fire. So she's basically oh, like the watcher mm-hmm. that we've gotten on like the the whatever the mm-hmm. what if right. So she's like the watcher, but specifically for Spider Man. Well, see, that's why I said she's more of like a Morpheus because she's there as like uh, this guiding figure who is like omnipotent. Mm-hmm. She knows of all things going on across the Spider Verse, and will help the other Spider Men, women figures, mm-hmm. and that one weird ass robot. Oh yeah, uh, she will help guide them in certain directions and in certain conflicts across the multiverses. Help to distribute Spider People. So she connects the web. Yeah, she's the she's the Spider Verse's internet, basically. Like she connects them all, and she can send them in different directions. Was she attractive? They're all attractive. I all mean, the spiders are attractive. I was wondering about Madam Pig, but because there was a slip of the tongue there, and I think it might have been a Freudian slip because he said, I heard de- it too. "Yeah, he did." He said, Dep- "Depending on which erection." Did I say that? Yeah, hundred <laughs> yeah, percent. That was a Freudian slip. So, uh, I, is it canon that she's hot now? Oh, damn. I think it's. I think it's Madam <laughs> Web pulling your strings. Oh, oh. She's got a crush on Sam. She got a butt web sack. <laughs> All I'm saying is Stephen King is a creative man. <laughs> oh, that's oh. right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Dane Holland. I'm Austin Shazam Pfeiffer. I am seven. I'm Austin Tiny Zent. I got some great. <laughs> <laughs> and we are Nerded Through the Grapevine, the podcast where four best friends gather weekly to talk about our favorite parts of past, present, and future nerd culture. And one of the original call-in GGs of the show, Seven, is here in the seat in the grape sack as a part uh, in the flesh. I've never seen you in person. Have you not? So today is, yeah, today's very special for me specifically. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Yeah. No, you went far beyond <laughs> any of my imaginations. Oh. Far beyond yeah. expectations. It's going to be hard to, hard to even record this show without just facing to my left the oh. whole time. So, oh. But today is the perfect day for you to be here because we always talk about things that are like movies or shows or games. Most of the time, it has to do with screens. And we wanted to step away from the screen for a bit. We talk about D&D a lot as well, which yeah. is a tabletop situation. But over time, it, like most things, has found a way to relate itself to screens just because of how easy it is to use for contact and for maps and for you know the D&D Beyond stuff and Roll20. Like All the screens are now making even tabletop pen and paper D&D more enjoyable for people because of the connection from from far away. And uh, we uh, even away from d and I'm wanting to get into the things that we like to enjoy as nerds that don't involve screens. 
and you're a man of, of of many many things that you do and have done, and you're the perfect person to have on the show because we're all boring and you're not. No, I am. I promise you, I'm the most boring person you'll meet. Well, then you'll fit in perfectly, so it works anyway. <laughs> I. Uh, it's not that I have a multitude of things I can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever uh, gone to a child doctor. I don't know how they got a med school so early, but you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jr. is also Dr. a uh, Dr. Jr. Jr. Yeah. I might be dating myself here, but a little Doogie Hauser. Is anybody old enough for that one? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Neil Patrick. Yeah. Neil Patrick. I Harris. had antenna growing up. We know this. <laughs> I had a sad, lonely childhood. You what? had to yeah. play 10 like with the TV, I like did. you were watching so all the time. <laughs> hey, hey, p- hey, 10 like, 10 like, there's people on there with different colored suits. 10, <laughs> ten like, they got dinosaurs, mom. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, this child doctor I went to go see, you know, could have been older than nine. Uh, he's like, I'm not sure if you're aware, but you have HD. I was like, what's HD? He's like, well, I don't know, but you got 80 of them sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> that is Same. my favorite joke uh, of all time. That's wonderful. So it's not that I'm an interesting person because I promise I'm not. I'm just extremely bored all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, this actually got me in trouble in school because if it was a subject I could get behind, hyper-focused, nailed it, perfect grades. You set me down in a history class, I am dying to stay awake i am passing like d minus yeah and that's just how it was uh my focus actually in high school was vocational courses Mm -hmm. because the more hands-on the more i could focus on that and the better time i had you know and your you might uh, your age range might be just a little bit of above ours but we're in the same generation they didn't focus enough on those vocational studies to make the people feeling like the ones that were focusing on those were going to make a difference in life. Right. Mm-hmm. Like they made it seem like you can go college path or you can go dumb dumb. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, and it and that's pitiful because now you've got people with like tons and tons and tons of tons of student debt and just trying to live up to that aspiration of I'm going to be the person I'm supposed to be. And then you've got these people that have gone off and got their vocational license for stuff like it's welding. And yeah. <laughs> they're like, like I'll paid off, I paid off my school in 14 months. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh-huh. I have at least six people that work under me that have college degrees. I don't have a college degree. Ooh. We work at the same place. Yeah. It's, you know, it just and it sucks because now you've got, you've got to know not only have that degree for stuff, but you've got to have a practical use for it that requires creative thinking past the point of your degree because you're trying to find outlets to be able to use your degree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. The the college for for things like that it it teaches you how to think that critical thinking basically it just teaches your brain how to make those connections to be able to figure stuff out because like in high school I remember taking the shop classes. And I it was the same as you. Like whenever I went to welding, before I went into that class, I was or metal shop. I think it was like metalworking or metal shop or something. Mm-hmm. But the welding, I could sit there the entire course and just weld, just like little stick welding, just making dimes on stuff. And I could do it the whole time. And all of a sudden, class was over. But sit me in a class where I have to sit there and pay attention and take notes on something I do not care about. It was so hard. It was just so hard for me to do. I took algebra two twice because of that. Yeah, same same situation. It, I failed it twice. Like it absolutely, like it wrecked me the first time because my my attention span to math is little to nothing. I can't do it. It's not my. Fa- I'm not a fan of it. Once they put the the letters with it, I got there's mm-hmm. no use. It crosses over into the stuff that I like, like English. Yeah. And, and I actually enjoyed history a lot. But the thing about me is though, I'm so focused on the stories behind stuff and the and like investigating into like what caused what. Like I got into history because I got to learn about people. Right. And things that no longer exist, so they're characters. Yeah. So that's what made my brain like cling on to it. So get me on some of that trivia crack knowledge of some history channel stuff. And I'm like, I got you. I know this. <laughs> tell me about the War of the Roses. Oh, I'll tell you. All right. So now we know who I'm picking for my trivia. <laughs> yeah. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Uh, he, he's so good at trivia. He hosts a trivia night. <laughs> he does. Do you really? Yep. Yeah. I host, uh, they, they call me to tell me where I need to go most of the times, but uh, at Baxter. 
there's a little Mexican restaurant, and I do a trivia night there every week, and I do a bingo night. But I love doing trivia nights nice. a lot more just because I can insert my own little bits into it. But I even get to do trivia on bingo nights because there's this one question, that this one uh, round of bingo that's called uh, Blackout Trivia Bonus. So I get to – they don't give me trivia questions. I have to pull them from somewhere. Oh, you're the perfect so, person for that. So they get in some trivia questions, and most of them I try to make dumb down enough to where it's not going to be just like deep cuts. I occasionally hit them with a deep cut. Like, who was the character that Jon Snow was roughly based on? <laughs> no, oh, I didn't do that to him. That'd oh, okay. be funny, though. You'll say what he's saying. It's obvious. I'm going to blow my stack. Yeah, it, it's obvious once you know you read the books. You can really see it. <laughs> So you, like me, it's it's always one hobby after another. And, uh-huh. and right before you get to a point of almost even mastering such a hobby, you're bored of it because you've been doing it so much. And that hyper focus, like, because like with me, if I get into something, I am 700 YouTube videos deep. I am buying everything I need to make the thing or do the thing. And then all of a sudden I'm like, well... I kind of want to do something different now because all I've been doing for the past month every day is learning more about this new thing. And then it's on to the next. And then I do the same thing. And it's rinse, wash, rinse, repeat. Is that the order that you do things when you wash your body and other things? Wash, wash rinse, rinse, repeat. repeat. Yeah, yeah, first, you, got first, got you, no. first you got to moisture, you know, get no, a moist. Right, it right. was rinse, lather, repeat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. But that yeah. was that was VO5, I think. Rinse, rinse lather, rinse. You got to rinse twice. Scrub crevices, right. Right. Oh, yeah. rinse off again. Yeah. But right. when does the cycle stop, though? It doesn't ever tell doesn't. you when it's supposed to stop. There's still when people, the water's not hot anymore. <laughs> there are still people <laughs> right now showering because the bottle <laughs> did not tell them to stop. True. Yeah. Rinse, lather, repeat. <laughs> when do I get to get out? <laughs> to like, be fair, my shampoo uh-huh. does say twice. Oh, it does? Ooh. It specifically says oh. lather, rinse, repeat, rinse, condition. Mm. Because they're they're playing it safe to make sure that they don't get any kind of like pruny finger lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> but how, you'll be speaking how many to times do we condition though? I'm or are we just or are we just conditioned to condition? That's once? what it is. That's yeah, I was going to say. I think the conditioner actually says only once. Well, mm. it's Goodfellow brand. You're welcome to go look it up. Mm, I'm going to have to. I've heard of this. Yeah, I like you think. Like that I'm boring, you know, I'm just like, I don't have much going on. But as soon as someone asks me, you know, what I've been up to for my week, I'm like, oh, well, I just modded a a Game Boy Advance and I'm trying to get back into some more 3D printing because the board games that I've been trying to make, I want some custom pieces that I can make with that. And I just made a dice set for somebody at my girlfriend's job, but we're going to have to run through it again because we're working on different things. And they're just like... How many things do you do? And I'm just in in that moment. I'm like, oh, maybe I do have a lot going right. on, but it doesn't feel like that to me. Like it doesn't feel that way because it's just my daily routine of just do something different with my hands. Well, now, like, um, of everybody here, only two of us have ever actually been in my booth, mm-hmm. and I've got a little sign on the wall, and it reads, "Reverend, body piercer, sideshow performer, and apprenticing magician." And everybody will sit down and read that list, and I'm like, "Is that real?" Yeah, they're like, "You do all those things." It's like, "Well, that's just the ones I feel like putting up there on the wall." But yeah, <laughs> you're like, "You're a reverend." It's like, "Well, yeah, I used to be a minister." Like, really? It's like, "Yeah, read my knuckle tattoos." <laughs> <laughs> for, th- for those listening, because you know this is not a very visual medium, my knuckles say "Pray Hard" uh, because I was <laughs> not <laughs> smart enough to get the word "meditate." <laughs> Across my knuckles first. Uh, so oh, sit meta and tate. Holy yes. shit! <laughs> and this is the first time in my life that I've realized this, but I can get that tattooed on my knuckles, but instead say "walk hard." Yes, yeah. yes, you can. Oh Dewey my cocks. If you do that, I think we should. Or... <laughs> I set his brain down. Maybe nice. I need to just say medicate. <laughs> medicate. <yes. laughs> that's that's gonna be for my lower knuckles. <laughs> But uh, no, like um, like I said, I just get bored super easy. And the minister thing I took on because I had friends of various religious backgrounds and they wanted ceremonies, not mm-hmm. just weddings, but, you know, confirmations and things like that. So I went through all the trouble, got ordained. And uh, so I did several like interfaith weddings and ceremonies and a lot of that was fun. Yeah. And that was it. And then Tennessee in, uh, what was it, 2017, they're like, 
So here's the deal. Supreme Court said everybody can get married, so we are going to say nobody can get married. And uh, they made it extremely difficult for people outside of religious institutions get married now in mm-hmm. the state. And so I, as a, uh, a form of silent protest, said, all right, I'm done. Well, on to the next thing. That's yeah. over with. And uh, it, Which is funny because in this month, I'm driving up to Michigan to do a wedding for a good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And Michigan's like, we don't care. Just don't marry your first cousins. <laughs> that is, but Tennessee's like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> it is a gray area in Tennessee. I know it is. It's like, well, <laughs> you have to prove you have to have proof of doubt within. Uh, there's like some kind of proof of doubt you have to have in there mm-hmm. that 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 you're not going to mix your your genes in a bad way. They yeah. weren't at the last family reunion, so I think we're good. <laughs> Legitimately, if you go every other year. You're good to get married. And, and certain people in Tennessee actually don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was at a family reunion, and I was sitting next to a cousin of mine's girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And th- these people that loosely knew me from somewhere were just so happened to be relatives of mine. They walked up to me, and they said, oh, is that your girlfriend? I'm like, no, that's my cousin's girlfriend. They said, looked over at my cousin, looked at me, and said, Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Hey. I was like, I don't, I didn't bring her. I don't know. But, what do you then, think these things are for? You're supposed to find your special somebody. Like, 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 no, like no. Is that where I've been going wrong? <laughs> but, I keep but, going out of the but, gene. They said, they said why? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm single, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not here with anybody. I'm just here to see the family. And they said, oh, you want, you want us to introduce you to somebody? <laughs> and I was like, not at the family reunion. Yeah. And they just kind of glared at me for a second, trying to realize what they have done wrong. <laughs> and then it finally clicked. They're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what's that? What was the second thing on on that list that you that you oh, said? You uh, have a body piercer. Yes, that yeah. is your that is your current profession, uh, profession yep. right now, right? And uh been doing that for what is today? Like what is today's date? Do you want to the four the fourth, fourth? Or the fifth? Mar- I don't know. It's March. Okay. It's March. We'll it's go March. March. All right. Yeah. It is the fifth. Fifth. It's fifth. All right. So I have been doing the body piercing thing for nineteen years, three months, two days. Wow. I'm, I'm glad you remember exactly when you started. How many seconds? Why do people ask me that all the time? Because you got that specific. <laughs> so okay, I don't honestly know what time it is now. Well, okay. So right now it is one fifty nine. One fifty nine. All right. So what I say? Nineteen years, three months, one day, twenty hours, thirty one minutes. There we are. He got it down to the minutes at least. Awesome. No further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> That's next on the list is oh, judge. Yeah. <laughs> so when I think of if I were a body piercer, my my mind immediately goes to all the like the horror stories that I could be involved oh, with God, in having people so in that many. chair. Because working even in the service industry, like I deal with the public and many of them a day, mm-hmm. and. Yeah, most of them are fine. You know, yeah, they're yeah, perfectly yeah. fine. But the ones you remember are the ones that are the absolute worst. Yep. Do you have any favorite stories that you're willing to tell oh, that God. you were a part of? I could write a memoir. I know. <laughs> I would read it. Yeah, I've heard a couple. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I get asked this, this sort of thing all the time. It's mm-hmm. usually like, what's the weirdest thing you've done? Yeah. What's the weirdest reaction somebody's had? And I always have to uh, narrow it down a bit. It's like, well, do you mean weird for me or weird for you? Oh, that's a good point. Because we have two different levels of weird right. here. Right. You know? I think for you. I, I think I'd want to know what, what made you feel the str- – like after that person left, you were like, I'm never going to forget this. Well, you're, you've are you grown cold and calloused to all this <laughs> stuff over the years. So sure. if something, if something mm-hmm. is ringing a bell in your brain to say like, okay, now that is weird, give me. Yeah. All right. Well, I will preface this with saying, when somebody's in the chair, just as in joking manner, I say, try not to pass out puke or pee in the chair. Right. It's alliteration. It's fun. Right. Nobody's ever peed in the chair. That's good. Nobody's ever pooed in the chair. Well, I know what I'm doing next time. Yeah, I'm in it. yeah both. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah. No number threes. You're good at... Oh, oh no. no. Is that when the other one opens up? <laughs> 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 yes. You've got one too. I've, 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 nicked the, I've nicked the seam on that with my razor before. <laughs> it's now a zipper. It takes so long to quit bleeding. Oh god. Well, speaking of, yeah. Uh, no, we don't need to talk about that. No. Nope. Uh, 
let's see. All right. So best reaction that has completely put me off. And I've told the story to numerous people and a lot of people don't know that when you are in my chair, you don't have HIPAA rights. Right. <laughs> I am not performing a medical service. You are not there to receive treatment. I don't need to know your conditions, nor am I treating those conditions. So whatever happens in my booth, I can talk about to anybody. Uh, so all that being said, mm-hmm. I've had two different individuals, both of the female persuasion, mm-hmm. to have an O face. Yeah, from the pain of it. And the first time it happened, it was like a... Uh, one of those old school herbal essences commercials. Yeah. <laughs> and oh I, my God. Oh, I you haven't wish. thought about that. Well, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Herbal essences. <laughs> less, less yes moaning, but still the moaning. Uh, and I'm talking like head back, hips up out of the chair. Whoa. I just stood back. I'm like, no. It, no. No. Yes. That, that, no. That, <laughs> And I just, I stood there for a minute. I was a complete shock. I'm like, no, she's just a little animated. <laughs> Did the second piercing, same exact response, hips up, head back. I'm like, okay. A twofer. A twofer. And uh, turns out with this particular individual, that was her stress response. Really? Every time she Weird. got pierced, oh, button. Every wow. time. Oh, I thought that you I didn't know that. I, I didn't know you, that was a thing. I thought you were meaning just like a stress response in general, because if I was, if I did that every time that I got stressed, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be having to wear diapers. <laughs> we would have like, with the spider like, incident. Like, yeah, right. like, like, honestly, that would be a confusing time to be this boy, to be walking around outside just stressed to death that there's spiders everywhere and there's canine finish all over my leg because I can't stop. I can't stop. Those are eight legs of pleasure for you, not uh, fear. Uh, not going to lie. If I got out of the truck and uh, you're out there walking around like, oh, is that a spider? Oh. <laughs> I would have been like, all right, you know, guys, nice to meet I might have to do this a different day. <laughs> Not, uh, nice to meet you. Did, Bye. Was this a revelation for this person in that moment? Or is that something that they had experienced in the past? No, this was this was completely new for all three of for, us because her boyfriend was in the room at the time. Yeah. And he starts laughing because he thinks this is a different type of response. Yeah. And I just stood back. I'm like, oh, honey. <laughs> yeah, because clearly, clearly they never went on that journey together. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I've never heard that before. Turns out. <laughs> turns out. <laughs> turns out his name is Scotty, and he doesn't know. <laughs> God. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have got this reference, except my wife is younger than me and listens to that music. <laughs> yep. Oh, no. Wow, that that is interesting. And even more so that everyone there, like you said, this is new. We all just yes. learned something. And I guess, like you said, the second piercing is when it was like, okay, for sure, this is this what's This is happening. for sure. Yeah. And uh, you were able to form hypothesis upon the first one. Get right. your th- get, yes. get all your, th- your, your theory and everything worked out. You're like, now, if this was to occur again... Well, I'll be dead. Great, Scott! <laughs> I didn't even have to bounce my head off the toilet for that one. Uh, <laughs> that's when I got the idea for the fuck's capacitor. <laughs> Jesus. That's so good. Oh. <laughs> what have you done? What have you done? Coming soon to Dollar General near you. <laughs> All, always near you. <laughs> Coming soon to a Dollar General, always near you. But I will say that is uh that was the weirdest response. And with this this one particular person, every time thereafter, she would get a piercing, same exact response. Wow. And uh, towards the end, I started to feel kind of bad. I mean, it's like you just get a Powerade out of the fridge, <laughs> right? You slip it through. Here's your electrolytes. We've got a second one coming. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I would say that was the weirdest response. I've had it happen one other time ever. You just need to go ahead and stock your your little section over there with uh, packs of Newports. <laughs> <laughs> just get you just just that 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 signature, just like reaction. Newport in the mouth, light it. Here's you a Powerade. Send them out the door. Five stars across the board. A you know? new sign that says, caution, piercings may cause orgasms, and people just laugh, and you're like, no, that's real. That's real. <laughs> just like my sign. That one, that one's real, too. Well, now, I am a, I'm allowed a great amount of personal freedoms and expressions doing what I do. Yeah. You know? I try to keep my booth kind of 
PG 13 ish. You know, I don't have too much R rated content. There's, you know, I do have some things posted I couldn't say out loud here. Sure. Uh, without you doing some editing work, of course. Right. Uh, but I also have small children that are clients. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. like uh, little kids getting their ears pierced and stuff. Yeah, Which so. is a lot safer to go to you rather than have their ears fall off by right. going to the guns. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, people are like, oh, you're always so good with kids. It's like, well, yeah. Why? You know, like, I'm already scary enough. Why traumatize yeah. the poor things? <laughs> And, uh, you know, for them, completely different setup, completely different attitude going in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we'll put them like a little booster seat. And we usually have like either candy or small toys we'll give out to them. And yeah. I have, uh, we keep tablets around the shop and I'll turn on Disney Plus. Awesome. I have sat through so many repeats of Frozen. It's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind it. I hate, hate some of the Disney Channel shows meant for like teens. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Garbage. Terrible. So many of those I've had to sit through. The animated life. stuff's so much better. Like, the animated movies. Right. The Leafs got something for everybody. Well, that's cool. I didn't even realize, like, the the range, uh, range, the <laughs> age range that you do deal with. Because, I mean, are, are there many old, like, old people coming in to finally get a, a piercing that they yeah. you know, always wanted and never got? Uh God, I got so many stories. <laughs> this is no longer nerded through the grapevine. Yeah. This is uh so we just we've been excited to have you for a long time because we just want to know your life. Oh, yeah, so do I. <laughs> this is where you find it out. Right. I'm getting to I'm getting to the point now that it's uh, like therapy. Yeah. There's parts of my twenties that are just gone. Yeah. Now. <laughs> we'll find them. Uh, we'll find them. <laughs> um let's see. The because usually five is our cutoff age. So I'm going to say youngest clients, five. Mm -hmm. uh, if there was younger, it was like special favor to family friends or like close personal friends who were like maybe their child was four and I knew him really well. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, this four-year-old's probably. Uh, oldest client to date for very first piercing. She was 76, had never had her ears pierced before. And for her 50th wedding anniversary, her husband went out and got her these massive diamond studs. Oh, dang. And she's like, well, I guess I got to get my ears pierced now. <laughs> he didn't know they weren't pierced after all these yeah, years. Right? That like... is not surprising. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> He's last minute shopping. He's like, oh, she'll love these. <laughs> they were expensive. But now I think my <laughs> oldest client, uh, again, I'm pretty sure it's for her ears. She was 88. And just decided she wanted her ears redone. Hadn't had them since the 70s. Oh, wow. Damn. She's like, yeah, I thought it was time to have them back. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, cool. That's cool. I, I'd imagine being, if I were like super old and it's like, oh, what are a lot of things that I wanted to do that I haven't done in either forever or yeah. have never done? And it's like, let's go get a piercing. Or. Why not? Or. Go on. And I got these really nice earrings I want to be buried in, so we might <laughs> yeah. as well go ahead and get these suckers yeah. attached. <laughs> now... I have not experienced this, but I do know piercers who've had to go in post mortem and put jewelry back in. Whoa! Because the uh, wouldn't they just find a way to do that? Like at the what is it? Mortuary is that what that would be? The funeral home. The funeral home. Or... Yeah, I feel like somebody on site could just do something like that, right? I guess, but I mean, huh. I know in specific instances where this person was called in, like, "Hey, so and so was a client of yours. They've passed away unexpectedly." We know this is a big part of their personal aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Would you mind putting their jewelry back in? And I think in some of those cases, it's not that the mortician couldn't. Mm -hmm. It's just they're unfamiliar with somehow the jewelry works. Yeah, gotcha. And, you know, they don't want to be making holes that they have to stitch back up later if they've right. done something incorrectly. So, And like you said, it's a personal thing. Like right. this, like you you had a personal connection for their life, and they're like, we, we would like for you to do it right. Yeah. As opposed to that, which that's great. And I've never been asked to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's like last on my bingo card because yeah. I've done. <laughs> well, I'm putting it in my will just there in case go. that you know, I die first. <laughs> so, gonna, I got case. you covered, boo. Well, and if you don't have it covered enough in that, I'll make sure I drop mine in too because I want to make sure this Prince Albert looks just right while I'm in the casket. <laughs> Because there's going to be a king Albert by the time I'm done. <laughs> because they're going to they're going to have me done the opposite way on the normal caskets though. If if I can't have my Viking style funeral, then I want reverse casket or only my dicks out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my other face. <laughs> Just nothing but my 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 everything from my feet to my. Dick. Just that's what I want in the other because if that if that's the funeral that I'm forced to have instead of my Viking pyre, then that's yeah. what I want the world to know. It was tiny. I, it wasn't me. <laughs> it was not me. I, I killed him. I did not kill that man, I swear. Take off my mesh is what you will. I am claiming dibs now. 
Because if I have to do if I have to do anything with your PA specifically post mortem, I'm going through on it, and I'm buying one of their kettlebells that looks like Harambe. Yes. yes. So you will be post mortem dicks out for Harambe. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm the only person here without a piercing. I feel left out, but I don't know. It's, I mean, conveniently, he brought his stuff. I know. We're doing no, it on the show. We're doing it on here. the show. I have been asked to do that sort of thing before in a live venue. Can't do it. Cannot do it. I will 100% have my license pulled if I do that. Oh, yeah, is that wow. right? Because I've heard people that, that will hire for like a birthday party and it's just like, well, we got a piercer here today. Yeah. Like, is that is that not even legal? That's not. Well, I it also sounds that. really weird. And yeah. also, for, for something like this, if we wanted to ever film you doing a piercing, yeah. we would come to your establishment because you need yeah. some, promo- you'll, you'll need that promotion for your establishment. <laughs> you know, you, there's 16 people that might not have heard about you and we can get you those. <laughs> <laughs> Is there that many? Because I don't feel like there's that many. I don't know. It's a roller coaster. Sometimes it's 40. Sometimes it's five. got to meet in the middle somewhere. Anybody who actually knows me as a person, like I said, I'm the most boring person I know. I like to go home. I like to uh, enjoy the devil's gummy bears, if you will. Yes. Yes, because I have trouble sleeping. Right. And I don't like narcotics. But no, like when I get home at the end of the night, I just do as little nothing as possible because all day, every day, it's... Go, 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 go. Mm-hmm. And, oh, hey, you're this person. I'm expecting to get this, but I've also heard you do this. So everybody's wanting a piercing in some sort of like show or demonstration or performance. And, uh, you know, it's not uncommon. I will, no joke, if I do 20 piercings in a day, I have probably done tricks or feats for at least 15 of them. Like all together ever? Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody's like, oh, we heard you do this. Can you do this? And it's like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I can. Right. (laughs) Well, you're like, I'm not a like show monkey, guys. Like it's it's your job. Now I feel bad bringing you stuff because I I brought you the devil's hand grip. Yeah. And a piece of aluminum that's, you know, now now I feel bad about that. Well, no, you don't. I was like, I'm giving my my friend some toys. Yeah. And I play with those toys. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. We get off on so many tangents here. Um, Oh, yeah. It's very easy to do. Here, a few of us get off on the piercings, Uh, too. You see that? (laughs) (laughs) So, like you said, when you get home after your day, you want to do as little as possible. Right. Are there any, like, how do you feel about board games? Thinking of, of things that to do physically that aren't you know digital but still in the gaming realm right because for many they're a little they're they're a lot to do if you're tired like if your brain's been used all day and stuff like either learning a game or having to sit there and use strategy and all kinds of stuff it's different from playing a video game right in a video game you press the button the thing reacts in a board game you're physically making the decisions with your hands and trying to remember the rules you can't press start and easily find you know the button layout like it's it's more to do in a board game, but how do you how do you feel about them? I very rarely play them. Yeah, rarely. Yeah. Uh, so like, even though I have a family, I am very much. Uh, what's the word here? I don't know a word that doesn't sound terrible. I don't want to say like, because egocentric is not quite the right word. Mm-hmm. Like I don't believe it's all about me all the time. Yeah, yeah. I just like to personally veg out. Yeah. You know, now, like, if I'm with my family, we're doing stuff, fine, I'm there, I'm involved. But if I have the option to not do anything or not have any sort of social interaction, then I just don't. Just take it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Me and my wife, she says, you know, we never do anything. But I'm one of those people, if me and her are just sitting there on the couch and it's just peaceful and it's quiet, it's just us, Just that is perfect Perfect. for me. I get that. You know, I don't feel that we have to engage all the time. She's like, well, we never talk. And I'm like, well, then let's talk. If you want to talk, then let's talk. But otherwise, I'm perfectly content. Yep. I am happy just sitting here, just you're watching your show. I'm not watching your show. Yes. It's a, uh, oh man, there, there's a, a word for that now. It's, it's, it's coexisting in the same place, doing different things together. It's a, uh, what is that called? Cohabitation mutualism. So that's a that's an even more scientific word for it than I had. So yeah, I like that a whole lot better. He is the scientist. We've yeah. proven that today. Well, yeah, that's like uh, just like someone sitting there reading a book, or like yeah. even the other person flipping through their phone or whatever. You're both getting to relax, doing the thing you enjoy doing, but you're getting to do that together, yeah. which is nice. 
That's a lot of fun to do. And that's where, like with board games, it is a very like, hey, we're all going to focus on this one thing together. And a lot of times that is not a relaxing environment, even if the game isn't that stressful. Right. Because either one person doesn't know all the rules that the others do, so now you're behind on it, or it gets competitive in a weird way. Or I don't know. I get frustrated when people aren't playing games like right, like my girlfriend's family. Um, we'll we'll just go with charades. So okay. They're like games right. like charades yeah. where you're not supposed to say anything. Like they'll always say a word or something like that, like during it, and that frustrated me so much. <laughs> so like playing playing a charades game with them was like it was stressful for me when it's supposed to just be fun. Because I'm like, you're not doing it right. It's like that episode of Family Guy with Peter playing charades. Ooh, 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 two words, two words, two words. It's a movie, movie. Two words, two words, two words. Get it. okay, ready? No, no, one word. Ready? ready. Fletch. <laughs> Dad is in Fletch. <laughs> That's exactly what it was like. Yeah. Oh, it's so frustrating for me. But yeah. I, I honestly enjoy the act of making a game more than I enjoy playing them. Because I've been like, that's what I want to do. I, I went to school for design because I wanted to be able to use that to design board game stuff. And it's more fun for me because I'm getting to make something. I'm getting to create something. And that, to me, is more enjoyable than learning something that someone else has made. Aren't you prototyping like three different board games? Yes, at least. I've got a disc golf one that is almost done. It was like an early, early day of making it like it was already fun. But I've got 20 plus years of experience playing disc golf. So I was able to take my knowledge of that and go, okay, let's put this on a board. So if it's raining and you want the experience of, you know, at least the kind of how disc golf works. Then I then I was I made it and it's a thing and it's a lot of fun but yeah I've got uh, three other ones be uh, beyond that that I'm already working on like the boards and stuff and the ideas of that you hear that out there nerds those are deep cuts yeah. those are yeah. oh yeah I came in deep today son yeah, oh yeah you did. Mm-hmm. and we are always working on different stuff I mean I've got projects that I do as well my thing that's off screen is music. Mm-hmm. I, I like I play music. I play music on the weekends. I DJ on the weekends. I I mean I just enjoy music. I enjoy crowds. Right. You know, unless I'm at a store because then I would just again it's like the spiders are falling from the sky and I've just <laughs> I've just canine finished but all they over can my talk to you. Oh my god, I can only imagine if I had the stress response during a crowded store. That would be get, that'd get really damn. I'd, I'd end up on, I'd end up on a list. <laughs> That's just what we call an orgasm now, the stress response. I guess. <laughs> so so that that being in mind, though, but d- playing music, I've been doing that for about 20 years. And it's evolved to the point to now the more people that are around to see me play, the more amped up I am to be able to just entertain. Mm-hmm. I'm no oh, yeah. longer worried about what they're thinking of me because that really doesn't matter. People are going to form their opinions regardless. So I'm just going to do what I do. And right. realizing that, it's just fun for me. So, I mean, I play cover music, you know, from all the all the classic rocks and the Journey and the Queen and all and different stuff along those lines. But I also do recording stuff. Uh, and we've had Josh on here before uh, as a guest grape and uh, we is that who that was? Yes, Josh. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, we we had him before as a guest grape, and we've produced music, you know, for for wrestling themes and everything. And we've got uh, you know the guy Clayton Bloodstone's gonna you know hopefully eventually get to that AEW status where they sign him on and that he gets that big opener with his theme music that we've made for him. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And mm-hmm. just different things like that. It's just it's it's fun to be able to be creative. Yes. So. Tiny not included. Can you guys guess what my favorite off-screen hobby is? And this is going, like, if you guys can guess, I'll be legitimately surprised. Baking. No, Ooh, but I one. have been getting more, like, kitchen-friendly lately. That would be quite metal. That would be, ooh, metal. Metal. Oh, wait, does it have to do with metal? It's is not, it metal bending? It, like an avatar? <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually trained for that. That's the sad That's thing. A- <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me. Knitting. Nice. You're a knitter? I'm a knitter. That's awesome. What have you, have you, are you a recent knitter or have you been knitting for a while? I've done it for years. Really? So that's, that's the thing about uh, all these different like hobbies I've acquired is I can put them down for two or three years. Yeah. Go right back to it, pick it up and immediately my brain kicks into gear like, oh yeah, you know how to do this already. Yes. So, and I get a lot of flack for it because I like uh, loom knitting. 
Wait, it, like a loom? Like the, the like, thing? Like the like the weave, 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 shove, weave, 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 shove thing? All right. So it's called loom knitting, but it's not you don't use a traditional textile loom. You're not having to uh thread and compress and thread and compress. Mm-hmm. Uh these are round oblong square different shape looms, and it's a series of pegs that sit around this frame. And basically you are putting your yarn around these pegs and then you cast off each peg and then just repeat. Hmm. Uh, So unlike traditional knitting, you don't have to do all the counting. That's it. You just don't have to count your rows, your pearls and your casts. These are all terms that I never knew existed for this. This is fascinating. And I get a lot of flack for it because I I know people who are like hardcore knitting. Yeah. And... Uh, they're like, well, that's not real knitting. I'm like, well, it's it's knitting for me. I can make hats and scarves and blankets. So yeah, I'm, you can make the same stuff. It's just a different method of doing it. Yeah, I don't have so, to count, and I can set it down and walk away, and it doesn't come undone. Yeah, <laughs> I have a question about this hardcore knitting. Yes, does it involve like head banging and like industrial music? <sighs> I wish, because <laughs> I've been tagged in that. We all know that same post. It's that Swedish. <laughs> metal competition where they're knitting on stage and people are just yeah. losing their minds. I haven't seen that. Have you seen the photo the photo comparison of what like you've got a sound clip of what like the Swedish death metal bands sound like and then what their landscape they're having to live in looks like yes. they're creating these songs about death and destruction. It's like this beautiful <laughs> like this beautiful just mountainside and this little sh- sea shack house and this boat in the background just beautiful. And then they got the corpse paint going on. Yeah, it's, it's all about juxtaposition. Yeah. <laughs> there's a uh, there's an old cough drop commercial from Finland, I believe. And you should look it up. Just look up Swedish or Finnish cough drop black metal commercial. Oh my god! I promise you won't be disappointed. It is the best thing of all time. Do you uh, do you do anything while you're knitting, like while you're watching TV, you're doing it, or is this something you focus purely on while you're doing it? It depends on what I'm doing. Uh, there was one year for Christmas, everybody hit me at once, like, "Hey, we all want hats and scarves." Of course. So for the whole month of December, I had my knitting stuff with me at the shop. So in between clients, I was sitting there in my booth, just you know, okay. Loom, 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 cast. Loom, 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 cast. You know, just constant, just going at it. So looming is going around the nub and then casting is stretching it across to go around another one? Yes. Okay, yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Cool. Uh, technically, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. All semantics. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for... Was it December 2018 or 19? I made six or seven hats, like three scarves. Dang. And this was every day, just going in, pierce somebody... Okay, I've got five minutes to reset. Loom, 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 loom. <laughs> Gee, just using your hands constantly and, all day. And yeah. honestly, you can use that so heavy as a as a gimmick if you wanted to, like just to push your brand a little bit harder. Oh, yeah. Just because you do the strong man stuff, like you, the people can see you knitting all the time, and you can say like nothing trains the fingertip dexterity like the <laughs> like the, like the, the amount of stress you have to put your fingers under during knitting, and then take your thumb and shove a nail into a two by four. If you're not knitting, you might as well be quitting. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Man, I should start knitting my own line of gym shorts. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was literally about to say something <laughs> like that, and then it came out of your mouth. That, that's amazing. You might be strong, but are you seven yarns strong? <laughs> <laughs> I just want one that says knit or quit on the front. Oh, like, that'd be awesome. Like that, of a shirt. That would be beautiful. God, how could you do that? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not the one that knits. Hook cast, not hook grip. <laughs> Okay. That's a very specific one. It is, but those that know one. will know. Those that know will know. I don't know any niche things that I make. I mean, I guess designing board games is kind of niche, considering the board game community is niche in, in itself. Right. Because some people are like, oh, man, are, are you going to, like, you hoping to make a lot of money doing that? And it's, like, laughable because even oh, the yeah. bigger, even some of the bigger names in board game making, they just, they're like, this is hardly a full-time job. Like, you've got to enjoy what you do to, to actually keep doing it. I had a... I had a peep, like some people approached me once and they're like, well, hey, we saw you make these hats. Can you make us a hat? I'm like, well, yeah. And they're like, well, how much do you want for it? And it's like, I'll just give it to you because yeah. if I charge you what I spend making this hat, it's they, not worth it. They won't want it anymore. <laughs> there are automatic machines that can, no joke, turn out one of these hats in like 38 seconds. Jeez. It takes me six hours, we'll say, to do a hat. Wow. And it's like, you know, there's, it, yeah, it's handmade and it's handmade mm-hmm. with love by somebody you know or whatever. But it's like, no, I'd rather just give it to you because if you appreciate enough, you want one. 
I'll just make you one. Yeah. Plus, you know, you get, you're spending all that time for something someone you know will enjoy right. that you know personally. So that's uh, nice about it. Yeah. And that's just, that's probably my favorite hobby that nobody knows about. And, you know, when people ask, it's like, well, yeah, I like knitting, but I bend horseshoes by hand. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> pick your battles there. It's like one justifies the other, I promise. I could see you getting into some labeling on that stuff too. Like, start making like pirate themed uh, beanies, call them skullduggeries. Your marketing brain's just working yeah, today. It oh, is. Man. That's it's great. A, it's my, I mean, stre- it's just, my stress response. He's a pirate just chasing booty. <laughs> he is. He's the GNC. Of the oh, first no. and second sword. No. Ah, no. Ah, <laughs> no. What have you done? <laughs> no, he wants some man. booty shorts, man. <laughs> Arr, the GNC pirate has returned. The GNC pirate heard you talking about some booty, and hopefully it's contained in shorts. <laughs> shorts? Oh, no. Shorts. Yes. Shorts. <laughs> With an O. <laughs> Shark. Uh... Tiny, what have you... You've been into the, the the cars. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of like RC stuff, mainly crawling. You know, I've, I've done some bashing. Surprisingly, there's a vast array of things you can do with these RC cars. Cola. <laughs> I mean... If, move if, you so, if you so choose. <laughs> uh, mine doesn't necessarily haul anything. I don't have a trailer yet. Yet. But that, yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why I said yet. Um, I've been getting a lot into like the tent scale because it's, it's big enough that it's easy to work on because I've got gigantic hands Mm -hmm. and you know, it's not ridiculously expensive. Getting started is, can be cost prohibitive for some people, but once you get into it, the price just like drastically reduces, Yeah, you know, until you start changing out electronics because those get kind of pricey but for just your normal average thing you know you just you get your car you run your car you decide what you don't like about it and you find a way to fix it cool like changing your battery whenever your friend wants to play with it (laughs) yeah yeah i mean it's true tiny showed up and austin was so excited to get to play with his rc car that he's made and then they get outside in the yard he drives it into a hole and then the battery dies the last two times the last two times i brought one for y'all to to play with it's done that and he said i've got a spare battery in the car i'm gonna go i'm gonna go fix that and and then he went inside so i was like okay (laughs) because i was waiting for you to change the battery for us to run on the inside of the house so I can play with your toy. Well, see, I didn't know that. I, I was like, well, he went inside. I guess he's done. Okay, and then, so the, the and then you showed up in the house and I said, hey, where's your truck? You changed your battery? He said, no, I left it in the car. Well, and I just felt defeated. I was like, well, I was like, clearly he's done because he walked inside. And then I, I thought said, we were both making the trip to my car. And then I said, clearly you're done because you put it in the car and never got it back out. So I just figured, you know, it's your toy. You didn't want me to play with it. That's I'm fine. Not, like, but I didn't care if you played with it. Honestly, though, the little truck's badass because I drove it into the sinkhole in my front yard. And before it died, like I was doing laps around the sinkhole on the inside, like crawling That's over cool. all the debris. And I, the final, like I decided, all right, I'm going to jump out of the sinkhole. And it goes like gains a little momentum. And then right before it gets to the jumping area, it goes. Ew. <laughs> he's like, did you just slow the throttle down? He's. I said, no. He's like, oh, I guess the battery's dead. Yeah, I mean, crawlers, the batteries last for so long that generally I get, I'm get. i over this random RC adventure before it is mm. because I put you know, the full-size battery in there so I have extra run time. I don't have to carry batteries. Yeah. Now, in this particular truck, it's, it's made for torque, not necessarily speed, so I get about three and a half hours of run time. And I didn't realize how much run time that I had. Three hours and 25 had, minutes. Yeah. 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 And the last 10 minutes, Austin got to experience it. And I was like, oh, it was so sorry, awesome. Buddy. It was so awesome. You'll never see it again. You know, because I, <laughs> I lo- can bring it over again. I don't care. I loved playing with RC cars whenever I was a kid, but I never had any that were of that caliber because they didn't mm-hmm. exist back in those days. So to get them now and to play with one now, it is an experience because those things actually, when he says it's not that fast, bullshit. Like <laughs> no. in comparison to what I was playing with as a kid, this is number one. It's not attached by a wire. <laughs> yeah. So that's awesome. I only had one radio controlled truck that wasn't attached by a wire. I also never got that rebound. I only got to play with it at the uh, Toys R Us. It so. can't fall over. It, just it can't fall over. Well, there, there's a man on YouTube by the name of Kevin Talbot. He's the one that I usually go to before I buy an RC vehicle to see what kind of f- that it can, you know, 
take without dying because he does things I'm never going to do. He'll take a thousand dollar RC car, run it up a one of them. I don't know the skateboard things that are like super pipe? high. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He'll run it up there at like 70 miles an hour. Let it go flying 40 feet in the air, crash into a tree and on the ground and just keep on driving. And I'm like, I just, just want to hop it and make it go vroom you know <laughs> he's he's wanting to relive san francisco rush from the arcade days and he's wanting mm. to hit jumps and go into these portals where the it, you can't do it in real life unless you have his rc car right well i mean he doesn't make any he just likes to play with them he's 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 got he's got a lot of money he's got he's like oprah rich so <laughs> but to uh, put a little bit of perspective on it my crawler probably goes seven to ten miles an hour and so fast no it's really not like compared to like toy grade and to hobby grade yeah it is fast but you get up to like a basher they're made to take abuse and to go fast some of them go up to 70 80 90 miles an hour i could not imagine watching an rc car driving that fast it's wild the first time you see it you don't realize how terrifyingly fast they are until you have one coming straight at you at top speed and you're like this is what a deer see. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's it is so fast because I'm like I know it's going fifty. I've I, I went fifty to get here to this location, <laughs> and this is a horrifying speed coming at me at this little like five to ten pound vehicle. So now correct me if I'm wrong because I probably am, but like with RC cars, you have scale speed and actual speed right yes okay so scale is it the scale speed that's 50 or like the actual actual speed? okay that's so yeah. you have a 50 mile an hour brick just coming yeah. at you yeah that is a great metal band name <laughs> 50 mile an hour brick <laughs> thank god for your brain all right write that down hold on let me get my book 50 yeah. mile an hour brick. well and the cool thing about uh, about rcs is you can do whatever you want to do it, it's the it can be the same thing on a small scale that people do with the really expensive full size toys. Mm. Cause you can do rock bouncing. You can do like drag racing. I've seen low riders with little stereo systems in the back of them that are RC controlled. That's awesome. You know, rock crawlers. That, that's what I like. I like rock crawling. Um, there's, you know, bashers, you know, if you can do it with a real car, you can do it with these little cars. That's cool. So oh. you get to do the dumb things in a not expensive way, even though it's expensive. And you don't have to be inside of it while exactly. the dumb things are happening. Like, I don't <laughs> have to worry about dying, you know, jumping this cliff or whatever. That's something really cool about nerds and hobbies is we get to have these things that we had as kids, but for the adults that actually have a little bit of money to <laughs> buy the thing, that's really cool. Like you said, like our RC cars as kids don't compare at all to no. something like this. And e- even stuff like, I don't know, even uh, trading card games. I mean, you take something like Pokemon that I played as a kid. I didn't really know what I was doing. I knew the Pokemon. They were cool. I liked going to the little meetups and playing the cards and collecting them. It was fun. But as an adult, like with Magic, that's something that you get into so deep that you know, oh, yeah. you just, you see the image of a card that someone else plays, you know what it can do, you know how much it costs, and then you think, okay, well, the rest of their deck costs this much, like they probably got this, this, and this, like... You take this thing that was so simple as a kid and just make it way more complicated and way more expensive as an adult, but you still have that nostalgia connection of just the fact of like you playing with a car, a toy car, or, yeah. or you know, me or you too, like playing with just pieces, little pieces of cardboard with pictures on them. Like these, these cards, like you have that same nostalgia click that happens. And it's just cool to be able to do that with yeah. all these kind of and things. It, it's also fun to get to share with other people. Yeah. Because I've got a friend group that since I got mine, everybody else had to get one. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we typically go out on the weekends and we'll either crawl or bash because that's what we do. Today, we're going to go to Buddha's. I mean, it, it's it's a RC park for crawling. It's mm-hmm. really fun. Dude just has a big thing of land. He's like, I'm just going to make random obstacles and charge people 10 bucks a head to come play all day. That's awesome. So it's pretty cool. And I got to share it with my great nephew. He's three. He loves trucks. So I let him. It was probably not a great (laughs) idea. But I handed this three-year-old child the controller to my 500 and something dollar RC card. I said, here you go, Lucas. You can drive, but you have to let me help. 
because he just knows let's go forward oh yeah <laughs> so I, I i gave him the controller to my crawler so it's not fast mm-hmm. i wasn't gonna give him my fast boy yeah. because we would all die <laughs> <laughs> i bet he got to play with it longer than austin did no no i had to take it away from him oh, because okay. he kept going no i drive you know help <laughs> And I'm like, no, by God, I'm steering. <laughs> if I if I had enough time with it, I would have said the same damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> now I have a I have a particular umbrage with this whole statement of yours. You have a five hundred dollar RC car, mm-hmm. but at any given time, you only have four pocket dollars. I know, I know. <laughs> well, see, those dollars didn't come from my pocket. <laughs> they come from my bank. Oh, They're yeah. my bank dollars. Oh. They're his digital dollars. Yeah, yeah. His <laughs> digital dollars. <laughs> It's kind of like pocket men and digi men, <laughs> just kind of bred like digi dollars. God, that is so much more uh, offensive in person. <laughs> cash is. I'm glad you loved it. Cash is Pokemon, and any money in your bank is Digimon. Yeah. God. Well, what's really what's really fun? I f- <laughs> so I had to get Cash App at one point. Uh-huh. So because the lady I was seeing use cash app and she'd be like hey on your way do you mind stopping here i'll send you some money mm-hmm. all right cool whatever so because i hated that idea so much i gave it a really stupid name okay so it's his booty hole and some numbers <laughs> and she's like why did you do that i'm like because i hate everything about this <laughs> so buddha's since i never really carry enough pocket pocket dollars for anything other than like an emergency candy bar i got up there and i'm like uh so I could either spend 45 minutes going to the bank to the ATM to get $10 or do you take cash app? He's like, yeah. So I sent it to him. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he just kind of looked at it and looked at me and I just kind of nodded and he was like, okay. <laughs> so that, that one bit me in the end. Later, he went on OnlyFans and tried looking up that name. <laughs> he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> so booty, my God, booty hole 69, please. <sighs> I, really, Dang it. I just want I want to know what this man's got going on in this account and I want to see him without his clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Show me them feet. <laughs> since we have a game maker in the group, uh-huh. I have a proposal for you, sir. I want you to make a board game oh, no. that is safe for magicians. Safe for magicians? Safe for magicians. Are normal board games not safe? Well, I say normal. Are other board games that I haven't made not safe for magicians? Like, I what's am on? not allowed to play certain games. Because, with, oh, yeah. With my family members. Uh-huh. If it involves cards of any kind. <laughs> yeah. So I can never sit down and play like poker or uh, blackjack even. Because if there's playing cards involved, they're assuming I'm up to something. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm honest to God. Like, I... Like, I like to stick to the old school game rules. You yeah. Know, we don't do the Monopoly like, oh, free parking wins the cash pot thing. Yeah. Like, no one plays Monopoly the way it's supposed to be played because it's the most boring game on the f-ing planet. Right. I've also gotten to fist fights over Monopoly with my family <laughs> because they are uber competitive. That's not even slightly surprising. I need, okay. Yeah. But, uh, I'll have this in mind. It can't involve cards. Right. And it can't involve dice. Okay. What about coins? No, no, definitely not. I, was he just, can pull I didn't them out think of your so. I, I didn't think so, but I was just wanted to make sure that was in there, you know, so we knew the rules going in. You know, it'd be aggravating as shit to play poker with a uh, <laughs> with a magician because they're always asking about your cards. Yeah, is this your card? <laughs> like, and you got to tell them. <laughs> like, perfect, perfect card game for a magician. Go fish. Go fish. Yeah. Go fish. Right <laughs> now, do you have any Queen of Hearts? <laughs> Go fish. How did you know? (laughs) I have been asked so many times. I can honestly say I have never cheated at a card game. Never done it. Why would you? Right. And it's like, that's that's not what I do. I do card tricks. I don't do... Card cheats. Yeah. It's like, I'm not (laughs) here to shyst you out of your money. Yeah. So there's no fun in that. No. No fun in that. But the trust isn't there just because they know you're a magician. And it's like, I promise I'm up to anything. Well, can we bring our own cards? Absolutely. Well, we still don't want you playing why? <laughs> okay. So uh, he might mark them. I will. Uh, I will do my best. Yeah. I will keep you in mind whenever I'm I'm designing these things because so far, cards and dice are involved with all of them. I know that's that's the tricky part. <laughs> yeah. We substitute dice for sticks. I don't know how. 
but that they're just still not safe. If they can fit in his hand, no, no, it's you make not them safe. this long. This being like roughly two feet. <laughs> There is a game called Pim that you play with sticks that I know how to cheat at with magic. <laughs> Dang. What about t- what about uh, Tiddlywinks? Tiddly winks? Yeah. Yeah. Because you just hit the little seesaw and bloop. Yeah. Dang, what, yeah. Pog? This is going to be a hard <laughs> challenge for me. <laughs> yeah. You've given me the impossible. I'm suddenly really sad for if you, you, Evan. If you can palm a coin, you can palm a pog. <laughs> if you can dodge yes. a wrench. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if, you can, if you can palm a coin, you can palm a pog. <laughs> but now, I will say, I have cheated at one game because it's encouraging you to cheat. Okay. Everybody's favorite abstract card game, Munchkin. Uh Yes. Munchkin is Munchkin's one of those things that when you're reading the rules, I'm pretty much sure. Like I'm pretty sure it says, if you don't understand the rule, just make one up. Yeah. Like however it makes it more fun, that's how you're supposed to play it. I've, I've never played this game. I have it. If you'd ever like to yeah, play, it's it's so much fun. It actually says in the rules, well, don't cheat. But if you're going to cheat, just don't get caught. Yeah. Well, that that gives you license to cheat. It does. That's just yes. playing that's the like, game as intended. That's it, not cheating. It's like yeah. your mom sending you to school whenever you don't want to go to school, and you're trying to tell her, they're trying to tell her you're sick, and she tells you, "Well, if you get to feeling worse later on in the day, just make sure they call me. I'll come pick you up." <laughs> like you're plotting <laughs> what time? Like, no, well, I'm gonna go see my friends at lunch, but I have fourth period because you know <laughs> mom's gonna come pick me up because I'm sick. <laughs> So what I'm hearing is this game Munchkin. I don't have to know how to play it to be able to play it and be good at it. I just make it up as I go along. Ish. 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 That sounds even better. <laughs> you just, need to know the basics and then beyond no, that. No, that's not what I just that's heard. That's it. That's pretty much it. I'll just can, let, I'll just let people go, no, you can't do that. Okay. And then they look away and I do it anyway. <laughs> so I'm just going to slide this right yeah. here. The, uh, the best game ever played for all intents and purposes. Notice I didn't say it the Southern way. Mm. Yeah. What, what's the southern way I'm going to try? Intensive purposes. Intensive purposes? Yes. That's a thing? Yes. I thought it was porpoises. Oh, porpoises. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that was that one science experiment where the lady fed the dolphin like LSD and like, you know, Whoa. rubbed it off. So. That's intensive porpoise? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it is. Okay. They were just uh, checking the dolphin's stress response. <laughs> 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 I bet there are spiders there. That day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I was playing a game of Munchkin, and for all intents and purposes, it looked like I had five cards in my hand, like you do, mm-hmm. except each card was a character behind that character was a weapon and an attribute. Oh, so you had 15 cards? I had in your 15 hand? cards in my hand. And no one knew. So every time it'd be my turn, I could just sit here and go, okay, and I would just fan the deck, and it would look like I'm taking out three cards. But really, I was just taking out the one. Preset Incredible. character had ready to go. You were just nice. playing the role of wizard and rogue, and that's <laughs> why you're you're a magician in real life. So you're the wizard. Now I do have to confess, I've never played a game of D anD. d You'd be wonderful at that. Game I have been. Been. I know. I know. I'm sorry. This is the wrong podcast. No, right? not at all. This is the best podcast because I have. Know. I have played. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Right. I got to play that tabletop. Okay. Oh, that's good enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. The Dresden Files? Somebody got me the tabletop book for that, and then they took it. <laughs> Wait, so there's a tabletop bo- uh, RPG based on the books yeah. of the Dresden Files? I didn't know that. Yeah. Somebody huh. got me the book once with like a little run of the books. I think it's like the first four. Uh-huh. And they're like, oh, hey, if you're not going to use this guide anytime soon, can I use it? Yeah, I'm going to take okay. it back. <laughs> and the same thing happened with the Vampire of the Masquerade one. Somebody gave it to me for my birthday one year. And they're like, oh, hey, can I borrow this for a character sheet? I'm like, yeah. Never saw it again. That was, uh, how old am I? Well, we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> that was 16 years ago. <laughs> Damn. Well, seven. Any I day can, now. I can give you the PDF copy because the VTM, when you buy the book, it comes with a PDF copy. And That's I'm great. not going to yeah. use that. That's great. So uh, I can fulfill your desire. Like spiders. Spiders. <laughs> like, oh, sp- uh, oh, spiders. Uh, but now I was going to say, like, uh, I've never played D anD D, but I've always been a huge fan of the concept of chaotic neutral. Yeah, well, everybody, <laughs> is. everybody is. The DM just has to make sure to keep you in your lane. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much, it's a full time job. But it yeah, like be. the next time we play a D anD D, if we can get you into the schedule, we know. I mean, I know you're a busy man, but you know. Love to have you play with us. If you if you get home at night and you sit down on your couch and you want to do nothing, just think about that exact same thing, except (laughs) you're daydreaming with your mouth. (laughs) 
<laughs> Daydreaming with your mouth is D and D. Yep. Yeah. Well, I saw this. I saw this meme yesterday, and it said, uh, "People think D and D, and they imagine Elder Rings, but when you play D and D, it's Monty Python and the Holy Grail." <laughs> yeah, one hundred accurate. One hundred percent. Like, because they think they're going to get into the, like this big badass struggle, and they're gonna and they're gonna like go up against this giant monster, and they're gonna hack it to death, and everything. Uh, well, you you tripped and you fell and your sword accidentally cut your leg off because you rolled a you rolled a one and now that swing actually you lost your balance and yeah you've severed your own limb. What now? What? Or, it's just or, a flesh wound. So that's <laughs> what you say at that point. Or my favorite thing as a DM because I'm basically the forever DM. Yep. <laughs> you set up this scenario, okay, and you you're trying to convey this emotion. Just for instance, I'm not naming any actual examples of anything that's happened, but the party is at basically this parade because the palace is rebuilt in the city, and then the king gets just killed. Like, just nobody knows what happens. And so the the protectors, which is the party, has to go to the castle and try to help investigate what happened. And then one of them, who's playing a bard... <laughs> If this was to be a real life thing, makes a very insensitive joke about the king being dead, like his throat's all cut open, and he's like, I don't know, it kind of looks like a vagina in there. I don't remember exactly what happened if it was to happen. And it's like, bruh, <laughs> it's like, that's, what are you doing? That, that's DM troubles. That's, that's, that's what that is right there. Because you're like, this is my nightmare. You're supposed to be like, oh, my God, what happened? And you're over there like, mm, yeah, look, yeah. <laughs> well, like, you thanks. Know, it, it, it just, you know, you get adventurous a little bit. And my character was a little bit of a jerk. I mean, that, that was his character. I was trying to play into the role. I didn't mean to almost get myself killed because I was running my mouth off at the wrong time. To I the have wrong a, person. I've got a charisma of seven, like an add-on <laughs> charisma check of seven. So I thought that I'd just be okay with saying whatever, whenever. Silver Tongue helps with that. Now, here's the thing that I just developed since we're on a marketing brain today. Marketing brain today. Oh, We've got no. it. D and D and D. Dungeons and Dragons and Daddies. Dungeons, ah, that's already a thing. Dungeons and Dragons and dating. Oh, dating? Because you got to be okay with the DM sliding in your DMs. Ooh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh. Be- sign me up. Yeah. And, because if we could just if we could just develop a way for these people that are creative enough to come together and feel comfortable enough to be themselves like Dungeons and Dragons allows you to do. You're just you you you're you're not in you know, like restricted by stuff. You're just kind of playing the way you want to play because it's up to you to be the character that you've developed. Why not make that into a dating service? App. You can see app. how app. 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 app dating app. Damn, that's a good way to see on the way. If you're, if you're compatible, right? I yeah. mean, if you can get through this adventure together without wanting to kill one another, yeah, you can go on a date. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because, oh, this is good. Plus, just the the whole tag of the DMs in your DMs that would just right, that's oh, really that's so. Well, I mean, everybody on their first date is playing a character anyway to some degree. After my wife and myself sure. shoved half of a bowl of chips in our mouth with a I thing of queso, that was where that was going. Okay. No, no, uh, no. It was that was that was our first that was our first date. We just knew. Yeah. We we, we knew from the first time we we consumed cheese dip together that this was meant to be. <laughs> from the first time they saw a spider. <laughs> no. No, no, the first no she she couldn't defend me. I can't defend her. We're we're screwed. Like there's no defending our house. Defend you from the dog rocket you got? You <laughs> <laughs> Seven, I like to consider this the podcast's first like full date with you, and I think oh. it went well that I, I want to go on another one soon, if you're okay with that. Sure. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us on this episode with Seven and all the rest of the best friends. And wherever you listen to us, keep doing that. There's probably a five-star rating deal. Click the fifth star and then write something nice or write something that you, about us that you don't like. I don't really care. Click the five stars wherever you're at. Just scroll and click it, and we'll feel really good about it. And then you can go in Redbubble. There's a link in the description. I'm not even going to make you go look it up on the Googles. You just copy and paste or click on it. I don't know how it works on the newer thing. And go get a T-shirt with our logo on it. I, I'm, I made the things, and they, they I, like, I think they look neat, and I want to see you wearing one. And if you'd like to talk to us, you can get on our social media pages. You can get on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook by looking up at Nerd Grapevine. On there, we can talk about our stress responses and what helps to trigger those. <laughs> we can help. We can help forge this path forward. 
of uh, understanding each other just a little bit better. And if you wanted to uh, donate a little bit to the cause, you can get on our Patreon, donate you know a little bit of money, get a shiny holographic nerd at the Great Bun sticker. Uh, content that we will release on there that hasn't been available to everybody. And you can do that by getting on Patreon, looking up Nerd Grapevine as well. Uh, just whatever you do, don't talk about your stress response and how your stress response got you in trouble at the local Walmart <laughs> without explaining to people further what that's supposed to mean because it's it's more disturbing than what they thought. And that might cause them to have a little bit of... So I went to Bucky's <laughs> yesterday... <laughs> And, like, I suddenly get why everybody is flocking to this establishment. You don't need that much at a gas station, but if it's there, why the hell not? Yeah, and, like... Do you need a rocking horse? No, but here they are. I'm here to tell you, I got the double XL Big Buck and Brisket Sandwich. (laughs) That's that's what it's called. (laughs) And it was fantastic. Like, the food is so good. If you go, take way more money than you need. (laughs) If there's not one in your area, well, you're out of luck, and you should find us on Discord. There's a link in the description. We're on there. You can talk to us about how sad you are that you don't have a Bucky's with beaver nuggets in your town. And the statue outside is oddly pleasant when it rains because, you know, it's a wet beaver. (laughs) So find us on Discord. We're on there live, uncut, uncensored, and irrevocably circumcised. on YouTube. It doesn't even have to be raining. Seven could just give it a piercing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Seven goes Oh god. I, that, that's perfect. You can also find us on YouTube and you know this is going to be the the this is going to be the question that's plaguing everybody's mind for the past week. Seven, when life gives you grapes. <clears throat> when life gives you grapes, try new preparation H. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need it. <laughs> I've been sitting on that one for months. That's why I needed the preparation H, right? (laughs) Oh!